On November 8, 2013, Typhoon Yolanda, known to the rest of the world as Haiyan, ripped through the Philippines. Winds reached a sustained speed of 195 miles per hour. Over 6,000 people were killed, 2,000 remained missing, and 4 million lost their homes. The journey begins December 8, 2013 in Duluth, Minnesota, where it's negative 15 degrees and snowing. Over the next two days, I flew from Minneapolis to LA, LA to Hawaii, Hawaii to the Philippines, and from Manila to Roja City on the island of Panay, where we focused our relief efforts. Weather upon arrival was 98 degrees and sunny. There we gathered as a team, and while we started as strangers, we quickly became friends. The effects of the typhoon were immediately apparent. The airport was missing its roof. We had Lori, a neurotrauma ICU nurse from Arizona, Laura, emergency department from Maine, Paolo, neurotrauma ICU from California, Betty, operating room from Massachusetts, Stella, case management from Illinois, and me, Anna, ICU from Minnesota. Our team leader was Betty, a nurse practitioner from California. This is where we would stay for the next two weeks. On our first day, we went to Barangay Cano An Estancia in Tent City. Each day we drove to different locations to set up makeshift clinics. Everywhere we looked, there was devastation from the typhoon. These tricycles are a main mode of transportation. This is our first clinic where we triaged patients. We treated 256 people. Later that day we went to visit a mass grave to place a wreath. This is where unidentified remains have been buried. Unfortunately, there are still people missing and a grave remains open. Finally, we went to Tent City where we were warmly welcomed. It currently houses over 2,000 people who remain displaced. This is the only toilet and shower area and is actually a recent improvement. The kids were really happy to see us and asked us to please come back. The second day we went to Barangay Bayuyan Estancia. This was the busiest clinic and we saw 575 people. Many people presented with chronic untreated conditions like hypertension, diabetes, and asthma. Lack of supplies is a widespread problem. A child came in with a partially amputated finger, so we placed him on the altar and draped him with a tablecloth, but the sutures had dissolved in the kit. Unfortunately, he had to go to the hospital, which many families cannot afford as it requires a down payment prior to treatment. This picture shows the constant smoke that fills the air from the nightly burning of trash, debris, and agricultural waste. On the third day, we drove down winding dirt roads to a very rural place, Barangay Nipa Concepcion. This small fishing village was nearly totally destroyed. We set up a clinic in a daycare center next to the ocean. Here we saw 261 people and performed an IND on a one-year-old with abscess bug bites. On the fourth day, we went to Barangay Embarchadero Batad. Immediately after arrival, there was a tropical downpour. For the first five days, our NRN was paired with a medical team from Singapore. We worked very well together and hope to see them again. Safety regulations are very different in the Philippines. There is a family of six on this motorcycle. That day we treated a large burn from a motorcycle on a small child not in this picture. At the end of each clinic we played games with the locals as part of stress debriefing. It was great to see them smile and laugh and forget about the disaster around them even if it was only for a moment. I also got a personal taste of the Philippine health system by coming down with a sinus infection. One week of antibiotics cost 650 pesos or about 16 US dollars. When the average income is about $100 a month, it's easy to see why offering continued medical relief is so important. On the fifth day, we went to Barangay Santa Ana and Malbog Estancia, where we saw 332 people. Each day, the locals offered us snacks. These are candied purple yams. Stray dogs are everywhere, and it was really hard not to pet them. Rabies is a huge problem in the Philippines. That night, we said goodbye to the Singapore team. Day six brought us to Rojas City Health Clinic where we spread out and helped where we were needed. Betty and I went to labor and delivery where we both were able to jump right in and deliver a baby. Women labor in a small community room and go into the delivery room when they're ready to deliver. Two women can deliver at the same time. We did not hear one moan or scream the entire time and no pain meds were given. We also met some nursing students. There is a large anti-smoking campaign with posters and signs around the island. On our final day, we took an hour-long boat ride to an outrigger on the island Olotayan. We encountered a downpour in the middle of the ocean, but we saw a rainbow. We were greeted immediately by the kids. Here we did public health surveys. The island has a population of about a thousand and was totally destroyed by the typhoon. The kindness and hospitality of the locals was overwhelming. 
The kids saw us picking up shells, and by the end of the day, they had gathered all the shells they could find for us. The adults also brought us the largest shells they owned from their homes and wanted us to have them. We also were invited into many homes where we heard stories of survival. We were always offered Coke, what seemed to be the most popular drink in the country. This woman hid under a mattress while her home was ripped apart by the winds. The entire medical mission was an incredible, life-changing experience. None of it would have been possible without donations. To directly assist in sending more RNs to the Philippines now and in the future, please visit the following website. People still need help and there are RNs willing to give. Thank you.